Hi, welcome to the Beat Healthcare Burnout Summit. I'm your host, Ashley Ghosh, and I'm excited to have you join us today. Today, our expert is Dr. Amit, and he is going to share with us a holistic approach to healing and recovering from burnout. He's been voted the top 43rd therapist worldwide. Dr. Amit helps you to heal the root causes of mood problems and physical illness by focusing on healing personal trauma, negative beliefs, your ancestral trauma, and your biology. He combines neuropathic functional medicine, gestalt therapy, EMDR therapy, family constellation, and homeopathy to help you heal your mind and body together. Um, Dr. Amit's best-selling book and online course help you to set a better foundation for your health by targeting five root causes of emotional pain and illness, emotional trauma, leaky gut and inflammation, toxicity, burnout, and negative beliefs. So Dr. Amit, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks a lot, Ashley. I'm really excited. We're going to really deep dive into the causes of burnout, mm -hmm. biological and emotional causes. Um, so that listeners can really understand how to treat themselves effectively rather than only relying on supplements or only relying on therapy. So let's go for it. Yes. And I would, I, I bet you, the people that you come in contact with as well, um, have probably tried like one thing in particular to heal and overcome burnout, um, and haven't been successful. So could you share with us why one thing doesn't just, and I'll use the word fix, but helps mm -hmm. or heal, have someone heal from burnout. Why do you focus um, on the different things that you do focus on um, to help somebody heal from burnout? So Ashley, there's multiple causes of burnout and why are some people more prone to burnout than others? Um, usually it's because of adverse childhood experiences, things that happened to you during childhood that prime your nervous system towards anxiety, depression, and burnout, yeah? Yes. Um, so a lot of people feel that stress, chronic stress and work stress and nightlife, et cetera, causes burnout. Yes, they are exacerbators of mm -hmm. burnout. Yeah, they lead to burnout, yep. but they actually enforce the vulnerability that people have in their body, in their nervous system based on childhood traumas, yeah? Okay. Um, so if you were abused as a child, or if there's lots of violence at home, sexual abuse, financial issues, a lot of moving, a lot of travel, a lot of sense of unsafety, and not feeling a sense of connection, and you were, you tended to go into more isolation, or you had to work really hard to get a parent's attention, then your nervous system is already busy, and it's not feeling safe, yeah, and yeah. so as an adult now, you end up either protecting yourself a lot, guarding yourself, ruminating a lot, overthinking, or you might be trying really hard to be a high achiever just to get daddy's smile, for example. Right. Uh, you, you just overcompensate your own natural rhythm in order to achieve, in order to fit in, in order to have that sense of belonging to the crowd who's succeeding or who's moving along. And those beliefs then cause you to stress more, to work harder, to stay up late, you know, or to party hard, right? And that leads to burnout, right? So two people doing the same activities as, uh, in adulthood, whether it's working late hours and, you know, staying up late, et cetera, none of those are healthy. But the person with more adverse childhood experiences and emotional triggers will likely burn out faster because their emotional resources, emotional resilience has been used up and their nervous activity yeah, is, is more engaged, more active while they're going through stress and trauma as adults because of that conditioning during childhood. Got it. And so I it's basically saying like, if we looked at the nervous system, um, that it's basically turned on all of the time. And part of that is due to the, the, the trauma or the lack of safety or connection, um, 
some individuals have had at, in childhood that kind of leaves their system, um, their nervous system kind of more ramped up and mm -hmm. a little bit easier to uh, tip the scale from stress to burnout. Does that sound Absolutely. about right? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we forgot to mention inflammation. Mm, yes. Uh, we shall go into, but inflammation is a major cause of burnout for many people and they don't realize that because inflammation is this biological activity in your body coming from the wrong foods, having too much gluten, having too much dairy, having a toxic liver, which we'll talk about today. Um, inflammation causes a stress response in your body. It's actually a stressor. Yeah, it causes the release of cortisol from your cells as well as from your adrenal glands. And your adrenal glands, when they're chronically stressed with life stress, yeah, they have to go into the fight or flight mode. And they have to continuously produce cortisol for to manage inflammation. Your adrenal glands burn out faster. And your adrenal glands are the seat of emotional or metabolic resilience. So when they burn out, you go into a cortisol imbalance, and that then suppresses serotonin, dopamine, GABA, melatonin, which leads to anxiety, depression, insomnia, nerve fragility, hypersensitivity to noises, all those things that come with burnout. And we'll cover how to heal inflammation and detoxify your liver later on today. That's wonderful. Thank you for adding in that inflammation piece because it is an, such a part of what I refer to as like the domino effect that really allows someone to go from, you know, kind of stress to a full blown, uh, you know, burnout way of living. Um, and before we move on a little bit deeper into the inflammation until, uh, sorry, into the healthy gut and stuff, I want to come back for just a moment to some of the comments of, um, you know, the trauma in childhood, um, because mm -hmm. I think that there, we often think it's just like the, the stuff we see on TV, you know, the emotional, the physical abuse, not to say that that's not a horrible thing, but there are other things that can lead to um, that disconnection or um, that heightened state of un uh, feeling unsafe. Um, yeah. And in my own personal experience, what that looked like was none of the you know, the trauma, when you think of it, um, that wasn't me. The, the trauma that occurred for me, honestly, was that I was going through school with a learning disability that was un, you know, undiagnosable at the time. We just didn't mm -hmm. have the information that we do now. But as mm -hmm. a result of that, I never felt comfortable in school or I always, you know, had more self-doubt that was kind of, that was there as a result of a disability that I didn't have um, at the time, we didn't know right. how to work through. Um, right. And so for me, that was the traumatic experience. And so I didn't know if you right. wanted to talk into a little bit of the maybe other things that can uh, be a result of trauma in childhood. Right. Okay, great. So yeah, you going through that disability and having to try harder and not feeling confident about yourself will trigger a stress response, the fight or flight response because of the sense of unsafety. And there's many other things that trigger that response, yeah? So I combine Gestalt psychotherapy, EMDR and family constellations therapy. Mm -hmm. And with family constellations therapy, we actually heal ancestral trauma as well. Um, so trauma that's happened to your parents, to your, to your siblings, to other relatives, and to your grandparents. And these traumas are passed energetically and genetically um, down generations, and they affect our nervous system as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, yep. For example, if mom was abandoned by dad, or if dad was an alcoholic and was violent with mom, um, one is seeing that violence and feeling unsafe with the violence is one trauma. The other thing that happens for children often is that they become loyal and favor one parent over the other. So they reject dad and favor mom. They carry her burden. So this feel this over sense of responsibility towards the mom. They got to carry her pain. They got to suffer with her. And they might even feel guilty being happy in their life because it means subconsciously, it's not a conscious thought, but subconsciously, they're, they're stuck with that sadness of mom and trying to connect with mom in sadness because that's the relationship they've developed from childhood. And to, to let go and to be happy in your life would almost feel like leaving mom alone in her sadness. 
And that is a chronic stress that a lot of people live with that leads to unhappiness, depression, burnout, and anxiety. So in family constellation therapy, what we do is we do healing sentences. You know, like, dear mom, I, I really respect you. And I understand that you are the big one. And I'm the little one. I'm the daughter. I'm the son. And that you are capable of, you know, healing from what happened. And I don't have to carry this for you. And both of us stay miserable. Yeah, when you're happy after healing whatever happened, I am free yeah, to take energy back into my body, into my soul. Yeah, and your happy energy as well. I can see that. I want to be able to see that as well. So that we're not both suffocating and suffering in old memories of pain. Yeah, so you disentangle yourself from your mom or your dad, and then you become energetically free. When that happens, your nervous system stops the fight or flight or reduces it. And then what happens is then you, you find that you're also healthier in other relationships because people who are caring for their parents or overcaring for their parents, they go into codependent relationships where they feel they need to care for dysfunctional partners a lot in order to be seen, recognized, and loved. Yep. Yeah, because that, I that when I cared a lot for my mom and my dad, that was an affirmation of love, sense of belonging. So now I know that when I do that with a partner, I'm going to expect some sort of being a recognition or being seen. So I'm not fully relaxed in a new relationship. I'm always working. Combine that with work stress, financial stress, life stress, yeah, late nights, lights on the streets at night where you don't go into a deep sleep so your melatonin doesn't trigger enough. Um, this loyalty, this extra working hard in codependent relationships contributes to that burden of stress leading to burnout as well so these unconscious stresses or traumas also exist for many people yeah it's not only the yeah. violence the rape the sexual abuse yeah it's this loyalties these feelings of self-doubt um sometimes it's also having a if your parents have had a miscarriage or abortion i see this very often in my clinic okay. people who think they're the first child in the in the system in their family they, you know, they come to me feeling this overwhelm, always working hard, never achieving enough, not living, not doing enough in life. And I'll ask them, please ask your parents if there was a miscarriage or abortion before you or even after you. And lo and behold, they find out there was a miscarriage or an abortion, a missing child that hasn't been acknowledged fully. Um, and yeah. And then suddenly I'll ask my client to say, OK, you know what? Just feel yourself as the second child, not the first, but the second child. Know that there's somebody else. Yeah, to fulfill that role that you're trying to replace. And when they get in touch with that feeling of second child, there's a sudden burden that lifts off them. Their head clears. They suddenly feel their right place in their family. And that can create a very deep relaxation for someone. And then the nervous system calms down, making you less prone, of course, to burnout. Because if you don't do those interventions if you don't treat the root cause which is a family yes. entanglement which is a missing child then you will overwork yourself to burnout and death yeah because you're always yeah. trying to compensate for something missing a missing piece of information in the family system and no matter what therapy you do if you don't do a good family constellations therapy and really look at this yeah i mean we'll talk about of course healing the adrenal glands with with herbs yeah. and detoxifying the liver but if you really don't treat this emotional root cause mm -hmm. then you're in trouble then yeah. you're in trouble oh i can i can very much understand and see how that plays and even personally a, a very strong role in and i see it even if maybe some of our viewers aren't really sure about the the connection you know from um you know uh, different uh, ancestors to yourself and you know all that generational I mean I can just personally speak into you know I can look back at two generations ahead of me and see similar patterns and habits of anxiety and depression and all of these things and I can mm -hmm. even now that I've worked you know uh, and healed myself through burnout um, and continue to stay away from burnout it's I can see some, of, I used to be able to see some of these habits and this uh, way of being even show up in my children. And that, that was a personal time, like, oh, nope, we're done. We need to 
you know, heal mm -hmm. this and move forward because I want to help to break that cycle. So even though we we're talking about it from also the nervous system and ancestral, you can also see it outwardly in habits that not only you might possess, but you can go back and say, oh yeah, my mom and dad did that. And oh my gosh, my grandmother even did that. You know, mm -hmm. all of these things to kind of really see that it's, it's a little bit of training that you're bringing, you know, with you, right. not but only energetically, but then also, um, you know, you're biologically yeah. speaking and genetically exactly. speaking, we change, right? Yes. Because imagine, and they prove this, right? Um, yes. So I've had lots, of, lots people of people whose grandparents have been in the Holocaust, for example, or in 9-11 bombing, and they've done research where, so imagine your grandmother now experiences a lot of stress and trauma. And she hasn't given birth to your mother yet, but your mom's in the womb, or your mom is not even conceived yet, but um, she's going to be made out of one of those ovaries. Yep. So your grandmother goes through stress and trauma, her physiology will change, she'll be hyper responsive to certain things, loud noises, you know, danger, um, sense of unsafety, etc. Mm -hmm. And through epigenetics, um, the genes of the ovary or the baby in the womb they start shifting, right? They're more responsive to cortisol and adrenaline and other stress hormones. So now your mom is born with this hyper-responsive nervous system. And guess what? You're going to be born from your mother. Yeah, so your genetics are already altered because of what her genetic changes based on her grandmother's experiences. Yeah, so now yeah. you might be born with a tendency towards anxiety, OCD, depression and nervous system disorders as well. And these are healable. And that's, to me, that's just amazing, first of all, that we can trace that path, so to speak, um, because I know for me personally, it was like, okay, this, this makes sense. You know, I'm not really broken in any way. It's just, this is just where I came from and I get to heal. It's possible to heal, um, yeah. which I think is a great transition into healing with the um, from the inflammation that is also caused from this high state of stress or high sensitivity nervous system, as well as what our gut is doing or maybe not doing um, mm -hmm. as yeah. you're uh, working through or in burnout. Um, so if you wanted to, I'd love to hear some of your um, thoughts on how burnt how burnout affects not only the inflammation um, as well as how its effect on the gut. And then what's that healing process? Like, how do you okay. pick which place to go? Okay. So before I go further, I want everyone to know yeah. that um, there's a free online course on my website that walks you through exactly what I'm going to share, right? How to heal your gut, your awesome. liver, your adrenal glands and emotional trauma and how it all ties together. Yeah. So you can yes. always read watch those videos and um, if you get lost here. But first of all, you have a stomach and you have intestines. Your intestines are like a nice tube, a nice lining kept healthy by good bacteria and good food. Over time with antibiotic use, poor diets, such as gluten, dairy, too much sugar, etc., the good bacteria get killed off. The lining gets damaged as well. You get holes in your intestine. Then with that, with that toxins leak into your bloodstream and that causes inflammation everywhere in your body. Leading cause for asthma, eczema, arthritis, a lot of chronic conditions. The chronic inflammation triggers or stresses your adrenal glands to produce cortisol. Yeah. And your adrenal glands are already stressed with the loyalties we talked about with stress, with trauma, etc. Combine that with the demand for cortisol from inflammation, your adrenal glands burn out even more. You go into adrenal imbalance. Adrenal imbalance then suppresses serotonin, dopamine, melatonin, GABA, leading to mental health symptoms such as depression, anxiety, OCD, insomnia. All this inflammation creates more toxins in your body. These toxins have to be dealt with with your liver. And your liver is also inflamed from chronic inflammation. So your liver takes a double whammy. Um, actually, five-time whammy, if, you, if there's a word for that. <laughs> one from inflammation. One from toxins created by inflammation. Uh, then again, from the pesticides in our foods. And then from all the toxins and processing of drugs and everything else we're taking. Yeah, And also from the fumes in the air. And also from emotions such as anger and resentment goes straight to the liver. So your liver is really burdened. I would say 90% of the world's population have a stagnant liver, yeah, an exhausted okay. liver. Yep. And the liver is the master organ. It produces bile for digestion, 
So, and it detoxifies your body, right? So suddenly what's happening is you're not detoxifying as well. So you get more toxicity, more inflammation, more cortisol imbalance, and therefore more burnout, number one. Number two, the uh, liver produces bile. And if it's stagnant or tired, produces less bile. With less mm -hmm. bile, you're going to get more gas, bloating, indigestion, and constipation. What does that mean? It means the worsening of your microbiome, your gut. So your gut is going to become unhealthier because of the lack of bile flow, meaning you get more leaky gut, more damage in your intestines, more toxins leaking into your bloodstream, more chronic inflammation, and a vicious cycle mm -hmm. of toxicity and inflammation. The liver also controls your hormones. So now suddenly, when your liver is toxic and stagnant, progesterone goes down, for example, and estrogen might go up. So you're led to other diseases such as hormone sensitive cancers. And also very interestingly is that GABA, this neurotransmitter for sleep and GABA also reduces anxiety. Right. Um, it depends on progesterone to work well in your brain. So suddenly you have low progesterone, you're gonna be more prone to anxiety and insomnia. Now imagine if you have insomnia and anxiety, you're gonna be nervous all the time. You're gonna wreck your nervous system, right? Your adrenal glands will yeah. burn out faster. So you can see how liver health is super connected to mental well-being, resting well, good sleep, and therefore preventing burnout. Mm -hmm. So what I do in my online course is I help people heal their gut with probiotics, vitamin D, and other lovely nutritious supplements, basically that really repair the gut lining. And then we're going to detailed homeopathic remedies, such as milk thistle, dandelion, and special homeopathic remedies for the liver that really detoxify even more. So you get more bile flow and restore gut function um, much faster, I should say, and more deeply. Yeah. So you yeah. really get to the root cause of inflammation rather than only taking probiotics or only avoiding certain foods. You know, a lot of people make the mistake of going on special diets and only taking probiotics, but they forget to heal the liver. But I'm telling you from my experience, the liver is the seat of health and needs to be treated in conjunction with your gut. Oh, I can hundred percent agree and share. So that's the combination. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. It, it's definitely, as you were explaining, you know, the liver's function and role, or at some point when somebody's in burnout, it's lack of function, you know, it's stagnant, how that can lead almost to like the cycle. It's like a self-feeding cycle of um, burnout and how that inflammation and all of those things um, really connect and get people I can see how it's very easy to get stuck in a cycle and I can also you lose me which what what okay. did you hear last I heard everything about the liver I'm going to continue about the adrenal Please. system and then the third thing I do in the online course is to make sure people's adrenal glands are restored right because they've been burnt out so much from inflammation and from stress um, your body's depleted of certain nutrients that support adrenal gland function so I'll use adrenal herbs such as rhodiola or ashwagandha or B vitamins, depending on what the person needs. Yeah, Zinc is also great for restoring adrenal gland function. Um, because remember, physiologically, they've been depleted. So yes, you can rest and you can meditate, which is all great. And you can go for therapy to release the trauma and the stress. But physiologically, your adrenal glands need to be rebuilt. And that's done through using adaptogenic herbs. Right. So if you want to prevent or treat burnout, it's super important to work on healing emotions from childhood, releasing generational trauma yeah, through family constellations, therapy and healing sentences that we do. And also make sure that you reduce inflammation and toxicity by healing your gut and detoxifying your liver. And then finally, of course, then rebuilding your adrenal glands so that they're resilient and they have enough nutrients yeah, or uh, compounds, really natural compounds in them to sustain everyday and past stress, everyday stress and past stress. So that's really a combined approach, a more holistic approach to burnout rather than just popping pills. And I love the, the holistic approach that you have shared with us because I've, I can personally say that there were certain times in my life that I was like, all right, you know what? I understand that I'm burned out. So I'm going to, you know, I would do one of those things and then wonder like, well, I'm meditating or I'm resting or I'm, um, you know, taking a supplement that it's supposed to help. And why don't I feel better? 
you know, or I, I've even gone through, you know, healing some of the um, ancestral trauma and was like, okay, so I feel a little bit better, but would still go right back into that burnout. And so I love the, the holistic approach because it really does, as you've already mentioned, really just hit all of those key points yeah. um, to allow somebody to really heal. Right. And the other thing I really recommend also is using homeopathy for stress and trauma, right? So in the online course, I also cover those remedies because sometimes, you know, therapy takes long, right? And it doesn't really go to the root, root pain fast enough. And there's some wonderful remedies um, such as aconite, ignatia, and other remedies that I cover, which really go deep down into the nervous system and release that stress response that's wired into your system. Yeah. Homeopathy is a fantastic energetic medicine that can speed up what, I don't know, months of therapy takes to do. Yeah? yeah. It really goes deep and can provide a lot of relief, both to depression, anxiety, heal past trauma, as well as, of course, heal physical symptoms. It's often used for physical ailments, but mm -hmm. I use it a lot for mental health issues and it works amazingly well. That's amazing. And a question that comes up is um, I hear a lot from some of my clients and I don't know if you hear this as well, um, but they hear all of these wonderful things and they just don't know where to start. It seems overwhelming. And so if you could share with us a little bit about where, and I'm, I'm sure it's very personal. I'm sure there are you know different clients that start at different uh, phases mm -hmm. of healing. Um, mm -hmm. But what have you found that is a great um, place place to start for someone who is currently in burnout or believes they are and they're just thinking oh my gosh if you give me one more thing I'm not mm -hmm. sure that I can I can handle it mm -hmm. okay so I'll just channel what I need to say here first is deep breathing long deep breathing um, at least five times a day you know five to ten deep breaths five times a day or ten times a day that resets the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is this big, beautiful nerve that controls your parasympathetic resting and digestion. The more you engage your vagus nerve, the more you engage parasympathetic activity, your brain will rewire itself to trust in the environment and not going to fight or flight. Yeah, so you're reprogramming your nervous system through practice, through activity um, to stop the fight or flight and therefore prevent burnout. That's number one. Number two, eat healthy. Yeah, reduce inflammatory foods. Yeah. Avoid the sugars and the carbs, which create this insulin spike and a sugar spike and a sugar drop, which stresses your adrenal glands. Make sure you're having enough protein in your diet to stabilize yeah, the nutrients in your body. Then, of course, eat whole green foods, healthy foods, because you need those B vitamins. You know, enough zinc, enough minerals, of course, to nourish those adrenals, to nourish those adrenal glands right? And then of course, feel free to take a look at the free online course where you can learn how to detoxify your liver. And there's a very, very interesting deep meditation I've given a free meditation where you can heal emotional blocks. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think that's video four or five there, where okay. you'll see a certain sentence to yourself that take you out of that subconscious fight or flight state. It's about becoming comfortable with your inner conflicts, and emotional, emotional conflicts and emotional patterns, really. Yeah. And dissolving some of those conflicts. So you go into more resting and digesting. Yeah. You start feeling safer in, in your life with your own feelings and in the environment. And then def, th those are the stages you can work towards. And then, of course, engage a therapist, family constellations therapy, gestalt yeah. therapy, somatic experiencing, any therapy that also gets you into your body to get you to feel viscerally what's happening. Yeah. I, I don't usually recommend analytical therapies or things like cognitive behavioral therapy. They do help some people a lot, but I'm looking for more of those somatic releasing therapies like Gestalt, EMDR, family constellations. That's what discharges stress from the body more effectively. Would you say it's a quicker way to um, get rid of some of those um, emotions than it would be the cognitive behavioral in your experience, at least? In my experience, yes. In my experience, yes. It's, um, it's because your body stores the trauma. It does. It's not only your mind. 
and you got to go into sensation in order to release you got to also include safety in body sensation while you're working on emotional memories yeah you don't go straight into like looking at the trauma and revisiting no a good therapist <laughs> will help you feel safe first give you some grounding so that when you're looking at those memories you're not over triggered or over stimulated and your nervous system will say gosh i'm feeling comfortable and i'm looking at this again and i'm not over triggered you know some i'm get, some safety resources are coming back to me in my senses in my heart in my in my throat yeah so i don't have to run away or hide myself as strongly as i was before okay. that sense of safety then will ground your nervous system so that when you go out of that therapy session back into life yeah you'll be less in a frenzy with the, all the activities that are going on in your life because you'll trust in that comfort in your body and okay. that will reduce burnout as well great thank you so much for elaborating on that as well and i'm i know that it's not something like i love the online course that you have and the information that you share how what is your take on people going at healing burnout on their own is it possible and is it better i don't maybe better is not the right word but can it be helpful to have you know a coach a therapist a mentor that helps take you through this process absolutely absolutely yeah, I mean, so people who do the course, of course, they come and see me for therapy or they see another therapist. It's super important to have that feedback, I think, and to have, you know, a compassionate observer for your inner process so that you can make contact with the outside world, with somebody who's caring enough to hold you in your vulnerability so you can come out of that fight or flight that's going on for your inner child. Yeah. So I definitely recommend using a therapist, using a health coach or empowerment coach um, in order to get that nervous system to reset while you're, of course, healing your body and some of the traumas on your own. I love that. And I, of course, am in full agreement with that, especially because it gets somebody out of their head. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of that analytical processing that, as we were talking about a little bit, is is good. But at the same time, it doesn't allow you to drop into um, your body and to see, um, have that outside caring perspective to support you as you start to foster um, your healing process. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. Well, thank you so, so much for sharing all of this information. And I will make sure that there is a link that's readily accessible for uh, the course that you're sharing. So um, it's something that's very easy to find for everyone. And um, before we go, is there anything else or any uh, thing that you would really like to leave the audience with today? Deep breathing with self-love and self-forgiveness. Yeah. So if you're hard on yourself, if you have negative thoughts, intrusive thoughts, yeah, don't fight against yourself. Don't criticize yourself for being in the state you are. Yeah. You're doing the best you can. So do a few deep breaths with the intention of self-love and self-forgiveness. And that will calm your nervous system down because some of the stress in our lives is from inner conflict and negative self-talk. So definitely add that to your plate. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I love that and do that often. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. And um, with that, I will wrap us up for today. Again, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, your time, and your energy with us today, Dr. Amit. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of love. Ciao. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you.